It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... I'm Craig and we're on the Magic TV show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. Welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. Absolutely. Uh, we're back with another episode. We're actually filming this nice and bright and early before Ryan goes to school. This is his I'm going to school, I'm not particularly happy about it look. This is his I don't particularly want to go to school today, Dad. Can I have a day off and practice magic? No, you can't. Oh. Um, but we're going to be having uh, a look at four brand new items. And it is... There's some really good stuff, actually, this week, isn't there? Mm -hmm. In fact, let's stop talking about it and let's start talking about the tricks. And the first one you're going to see right now. Okay, so the first trick that we're going to be looking at today is linking bands by Fernando... Uh, Fernando Moreno, I think it is. Fernando Moreno, and it's linking bands. And you know what? There's a lot of rubber band magic out there, a lot of different ways to link rubber bands. For years, one of my favorite uh, linking band routines was Souvenir Linking Rams, that was put out by Paul Harris Presents. There's a really great linking bands in um, uh, the book, Don't Forget to Point by um, The Flicking Fingers. That was one that I performed for many, many years. And obviously the classic Dan Harlan, or Joe Reinfleisch version of uh, linking rubber bands. All of those were great. Um, this is a very gimmicked version, isn't it? It reminds me more of a rope trick than a, uh, than a rubber band trick. You basically get a bunch of gimmicked rubber bands that allow you to do a very, very, very clean linking band sequence. And there are a ton of ideas on the project. A ton of moves, a ton of sequences. Literally... The, the project is divided up into links and unlinks and moves and sequences and transitions. And um, the, the, the instructor on the project will give you like maybe six or seven versions of each thing. So he's like, hey, this is how to do this in an easy way. Here's how to do a false count in a more complicated way. Here's an advanced way to do it. And it's, it's, you can tell that he'd been, he's been working with these props for a very long time. Yeah. He's literally spent no stone unturned. The structure of the act remains the same, regardless of which way you do it. So you pick the links that you want to use. You pick the unlinks that you want to use. You pick the sequences that you want to use. But in essence, the, the sequence remains the same, which is you have three bands one at a time you link them and you show that they really are linked and then you take them apart now you spent quite a while learning this i'm going to show people a video that you put together for social media we can have a look at you doing this i think you filmed this on a train to london didn't yeah. you so we'll have a look at this and then after you've uh, after we've played this i want to hear your thoughts because i know that you spent a lot of time thinking about this so let's have a look at the performance first of all <laughs> So that's the linking rubber bands. Obviously, when you film that, you'd got it. You'd got it to an acceptable level. But I know you've been practicing it since then, and I know that you've uh, you've made a couple of those transition sequences even smoother. Um, but I mean, tell me about it. How easy is it? How difficult is it? Because I've got some thoughts, and I want to know what you think. I'd say it's pretty. It's, I'd say it's like in the middle between like hard and easy. It's in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Here's my, because obviously we're dealing, I don't think it's giving too much away by saying we're dealing with gimmicked bands here. You get two gimmicked bands and you get, I think, four regular bands. The routine that you used um, only Basically used... Basically, two sets. Yeah. 
because the routine that you used, you just used one gimmicked band and two regular bands, didn't you? Yeah. Um, and that allowed you to do that linking sequence. Now, the advantage here, I think, is that when they're linked together, you can really show that they're linked. There's not like any ambiguity. Like as I said, my favourite uh, rubber band linking rubber band routine to do is the classic sort of um, Michael Amar linking headbands but with rubber bands. Yeah. And 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 they're never actually linked. The illusion is created that they're linked, but they're never actually linked. With this, they are linked. They are absolutely one hundred percent linked. You can show them like this. That's a big positive. The other positive is, it looks good. Like. I was worried when I saw this gimmick that you'd be able to tell that it wasn't a real rubber band. But when the gimmick is put together, you just can't tell, can you? Like, yeah. it really looks like a rubber band. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of advantages there. And the project is well thought out. Here's my issue, and I don't know whether I'm overthinking this or thinking like a magician. I want to know what you think. What's the point? And what I mean by that is... I can do a perfectly good rubber band routine where the bands link and unlink and link and unlink using sequences created by Joe Reinfleisch. And it's not even that difficult. I would say the difficulty level to do the Joe Reinfleisch linking band routine, which you can get as a download from Penguin with Magic, is the same difficulty level as doing this, because with this, you're having to separate the gimmick secretly. You're having to put the gimmick back together secretly. Um, like, is there a point in doing this? I get that the displays are stronger, but it's not like when you're displaying the bands like this, you can hand them out, because if you did hang them out, that's exactly how they work. Yeah. Like I referenced the souvenir linking rubber bands earlier. The big advantage of souvenir linking rubber bands is you could give those bands link out and let people keep them in their linked condition. So you could take the bands, link the bands, show they're linked, and then say, here you are, you can have that as a souvenir to keep forever. That's, an, that's a massive advantage to any other rubber band routine I've ever seen when it comes to linking and unlinking rubber bands, because that's something you can't replicate with sleight of hand. You cannot take, however good you are with sleight of hand with rubber bands, you cannot take two bands, link them together, and then give them out as a souvenir. That's why souvenir linking rubber bands was so good. Um, with this, yes, you're showing that they're really linked together, but they're not really. You can't give them out in that condition, and nor would you want to because then you've lost your really expensive gimmick, which means then you have to unlink them. So in essence, what we have is we have three bands linking together and then unlinking together, which you can replicate with sleight of hand without too much difficulty. So then it becomes, is it better having a display like this versus a display like that? I want to know what you think. I don't know. I'd say it's probably the same. So, I, I don't really know. All I know is this is probably the first rubber band linking I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I really do rubber bands. I know you don't. So, would you? Do, what, but why is that? Why do you not do rubber bands? Because a lot of people don't. Stage magician. Stage magician. You close. do close up. You do do close up. The only tricks that I do. You do close is... up. You go out and you perform close up magic. Yeah, but I only, I rarely do that. And if I do, I've only, I've only usually got like a couple of like. Say like five trips, and I keep on swapping them between the tables. <laughs> so I like one table, I do these two, then on another table, I do these two, then that one left, I do it with that one. So that it's right, and even the st even the tricks he does close up for stage tricks, like <laughs> they are. You do like chop cup, you do like uh, fiber optics, you do like ring on rope, you do, uh, whatever. <laughs> Dude, close. You do stage tricks close up, and you know you do. Um, okay, okay. So, but you understand the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. If the difficulty level is the same, what is the point of having this? Just what is the point? I don't do rubber bands. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I don't do rubber bands. I don't well, know. I do rubber bands. All I know is it's, it looks it looks cool. That's yes. It. Okay. That's what this is well made. Yeah. It's gonna last you a long time. The tutorial is phenomenal. It's really well put together and the sequence works and looks really visual. If this is something that you would like to put into your act, you are not going to be disappointed. My problem with it is I honestly will probably stick to my, uh, the thing that I've always done, which is Joe Ryan Fleisch's version of the classic linking rubber bands because it's a multi-phase routine. I can just 
use any two bands off my wrist. I can go into it anytime, anywhere. And I think it looks as good. Which is why I'm going to give this 79%. I think this is excellent. It's just not for me. It's just not something I, I would do. I'm not saying it's bad. It's not. It's just not something I'd do. So come on, stage magician boy that doesn't do rubber band magic. What are you giving this? I don't do rubber band magic. Do. David Copperfield did rubber band magic on TV. He was one of the biggest stage magicians of all time. Yeah, that's because he had a closer camera. Probably. 79% for me. What are you giving it, Ryan? 79. 79%. Okay, 79% for me, 79% from Ryland. Let's move on. Okay, so let's talk about another trick. And hopefully we'll get Ryland excited about this one because this is a trick that can be done on stage. Yeah. And it's also by one of Ryland's favourite magicians. This is Bond Lee. And he's brought out a very clever ashtray that allows you to ignite flash paper or flash wall via remote control and this is flown under the radar it's come out recently but a lot of people haven't seen this it's flown under the radar i'm saying that's good because then i can use it all to myself <laughs> well if you don't know what this is you put a little video on instagram about this didn't you you turned a piece of paper into a uh oh, wait, into a card wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it was massive i think we overused the flash on that one to be honest mate. uh let's have a look at this video where ryan scares himself to death with a massive you can just fiery... see my face behind the front <laughs> <laughs> shall we do it should we should we do a take one or should we just go for it let's just go for it oh my god let's have a look at this and then we'll uh we'll talk about what okay, we've so got my dad behind the camera i've got a piece of paper and i've got this uh ashtray so dad all i want you to do is just want you to say stop stop there yeah are you sure yeah look at the card got it there, okay, right. What's that got to do with a piece of paper oh, and an ashtray? Yeah, uh, I just want you to think of that card, okay? okay. Right, watch. Now there's one. What the <laughs> freaking hell was that? Now there's one card, it's a little bit hot, but if you, if you have a look at that card. No way. You can see that we have the five of hearts. Spades. Oh, Did the fire freak you out? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> was that your card? <laughs> yes, it was. What? Okay, so that, that that's that's what it is. It's basically it's scary. It's scary. <laughs> it's an ashtray. It's got a remote control no, and it's got a heating element. Off. In order to make it work, you are going to need flash wool and flash paper, because the flash wool is put near the heating elements. The heating element ignites the flash wool, which then ignites the flash paper. Without the flash wall, it's not guaranteed to go off 100% of the time. Mama so you need 100% of the time. Well, yeah, yep, that's because I put flash wall in there. So you need flash wall in there as well as flash paper. Um, outside of that, here's the thing. There's pros and cons with this. The con is it's a four-minute tutorial. Uh, Bond Lee talks about how the ashtray works. He so talks it's about... It's supposed to be a four-minute tutorial. He talks about how... What, it, is it, what, is it, what exactly is he meant to say? Well, how about some routines with the ashtray? How about some stuff you can do with it? How about routine. some... Huh? I've got routines. Great. No, it's easy. Just say this. No, it's, it's, you probably did, and you're just, you're just too deaf to hear it. What? You're probably just too deaf to hear it. Oh, no, That's in the four-minute tutorial, he definitely didn't mention any routines. Honestly, oh. Rye, I really think that in... This is a utility device. I really think that there should have been some discussion in there about what you can do with this ashtray because a lot of people have never used flash paper before and there's a lot you can do with it it's it's great in essence it's a thing that's going to ignite flash paper at will using a remote control anytime you want to but there's no routines there i think that they should have spent half an hour going through some ideas some uses um, some concepts with it because then I think it would have been more of a complete package. It would have been nice to see a live performance or it would have been nice to see Bond Lee performing this live on stage or something. That's the biggest negative I've got for this. That and the fact that people don't really use ashtrays anymore. Like when you saw it, you were like, what's that? And I was like, it's an ashtray. And you were like, what's an ashtray? Like you didn't even know what an ashtray was. It's, it, it's been built into a thing that hasn't really been around that much since the 1990s. Um, but I mean, ashtrays still exist and people can obviously use ashtrays to put, you know, rubbish in and stuff. So it makes sense to build it into an ashtray. I get that. So I'm, I'm going to kind of overlook that one, especially as it looks like a real ashtray, you know, and as a performer, you might have something like this on stage to put something in if you were going to set it on fire. But like I say, my biggest concern is there's no routines there.
But I've come up with a bunch of stuff. I, I like the idea of having the gimmicked ashtray and getting another ashtray that looks the same. I've already found them on Google. Getting another ashtray that looks the same, but it's a different colour. And doing like a PK touches with with paper. So you have a pit, you show two pieces of paper, you put one piece of paper in the ashtray over there, you take the other one and you give it that you hold it over here over the other ashtray, you light that paper, and when you do and you drop it into the ashtray, that paper over there bursts into spontaneous combustion. And that it's kind of like a PK touches with setting paper on fire. So when you set that piece of paper on fire, that piece of paper kind of goes up in in in, in, in flames. And uh, and then you could do it again, and you'd say, well, you know, let's do it again. You could even have it so that uh, you've got some sort of restoration type thing. So you could use flash paper and paper that looks like flash paper, but it's not. So what you could have is you could have written on the flash paper that's not flash paper a word. Uh, a reveal or something have that rolled up into a ball in finger palm take a normal piece of flash paper and show that there's nothing written on it roll it up into a ball but add inside it the other paper put it there do this you'll burst into flames but the paper will still be there because the flash paper will go but the normal paper will remain and when they open it up the words revealed on there or the word or the playing card or whatever but that's the point that I'm trying to make, Rye. It should have been more than a four-minute tutorial. I know you like Bond Lee and you're trying to defend it, and that's cool. But if you're going to charge this amount of money... I don't know, I think it's like 100 quid or something. It's not cheap. If you're going to charge this amount of money, I think you need more than a four-minute tutorial. In all, because it's a great prop. It's a great prop. It wouldn't have took long to sit there and come up with some ideas and some uses for it. If you've, developed, if you've spent time and effort and money developing a prop that you're selling to the magic community that uses electronics, surely you can spend a little bit of time putting some routines together and, and, and putting some ideas together that you can share with the people that are purchasing the trick off you. And I think that's a little bit of laziness. And it's weird because Bond Lee is not normally like that. He's normally got a ton of ideas. But I think that the fact that there was no live performance and the fact that there was a four minute tutorial is pants. Real pants. What do you think? No live performance and no routines. No routines, no live performance. Oof. Oof. He taught you how to charge the ashtray. How to press the remote control, how the heating element works, and that's it. Oof. 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 Oof indeed. Um, so Oof. what are you giving it? Even though I have to base it on whether I'd use it or not, and I think I'd use this, uh, which is why I'm going to give it like 85%, but it would have been a much higher 85. mark. It would have been a higher mark if they did like performance and routines. I agree. But as it is, they haven't, so it's 85%. What about you? I'm still going to use it though. Yeah, so 85%. 85 percent so 85 percent from ryland 85 percent from me could have just said 85 percent from both of us both of us 85 percent let's move on I just wasted it even more oh shut up okay so next up is another stage item another item that you can perform on stage but you can do this close up as well i guess this is the unfiltered uh unfiltered magazine by adrian uh Cara taylor okay and what this is this is basically a coloring book but it's a colouring book with pictures of models in it. It looks like a glossy magazine with lots of pretty, beautiful it's people in magazine. there. Lots of, lots of really pretty girls and lots of really handsome men in there. And it looks like one of those glossy gossip magazines that you would get. And then any time you want to, you can flick through it again. And uh, the second time you flick through it, it's now got uh, uh, the same people in there. But now they look very old, very withered, very haggard. Um, and uh, like, you. like me, basically, yeah, you know, like me. Uh, if you've not seen it, I'm going to show you a video of Ryan performing it now, and then we will talk about what we think. Lots of people buy these magazines, and they like to look like the people in them. Like you can see, we've got all these uh, different pictures, and lots of people buy these magazines, spend lots of money on makeup and things like that, um, just to make themselves look like this, and. Um, the thing is, believe it or not, most of this is actually photoshopped. And if you actually see them in real life, they look a little bit like this. You can see they look just um, a little bit different. So the lesson here is don't make yourself look like who you're not supposed to be. Just be yourself. 
So, I mean, what do you think of that? I love the message that you put across in that video. And a lot of people commented when you put it on social media saying, great message, Ryan, great message. But that's kind of what this magazine lends itself to. Uh, there's not really a tutorial with this magazine. You don't really have a tutorial, don't really have a presentation given to you. You buy the magazine. The magazine is very well made, but you kind of come up with your own presentation. And I gave it you and I was like, what do you think you should say about this? And this is what you came up with. Um, what do you think of it? I mean, this is really a stage item. I don't know if it fits your show. I, don't, I couldn't see you coming out with this going, let me talk to you about the problems with social media these days. I don't... I don't see you launching into that sort of script in your stage. I've just finished throwing the lights all around the stage and coins are jumping all over the place and orange juice is appearing and craziness is happening. Now let's talk about the dangers of social media and the grass being greener on the other side of the hill, shall we? Um, is, is not anything that you're ever going to talk about. Um, and it also didn't get many views on your social media, which is weird because normally your stuff does. Um, maybe it's because it's not something that fits you, I don't know. Yeah, but, uh, it does not fit me. It do, it's a donut. It's a donut. But what do you think of it? Donut I mean, it's it's well made. It's well made, isn't it? That's the yeah, thing. It's well made. Huh? It's well made. It's well made. It does what it's meant to do. The artwork in the magazine, <coughs> excuse me, looks amazing. It really does. The artwork looks really good. Um, it looks like a glossy magazine. Um, the change, I wouldn't, you know what, I would do this, I would do this as a comedy piece though in my show, I could see myself walking out somewhere like Smoke and Mirrors and saying, you know, hey, th this is one of my wife's favourite magazines, she buys these all the time, she's always looking at the pictures of the pretty people, and I had an argument with her the other day, I said Sarah, because that's my wife's name, I said Sarah, why are you always looking at those, you know those people don't look like that, you know that they get photoshopped, you know that they've spent seven hours in hair and makeup to get that one perfect shot, and she, uh, you know, I could see myself kind of going down that kind of route and scripting it in a comedic way i could see myself doing this um but i definitely couldn't see you doing this uh, and i think that's the thing it's completely self-working it's very easy to do the the magazine is very well made it'll last you a lifetime if you can think of a use for it for your act then by all means put it in because it's great um it's just you ha it has to fit you as a performer what do you think yeah Thanks for the insightful reviews that you're putting across this week, <laughs> Ryland. You know, I, I, yeah, I mean, honestly, that just sums up everything, doesn't it? I mean, I can't, can't think of anything else that you can possibly say. Just, yeah, thank you. You know, I mean, it, this is why people come and watch this channel. People come and watch Magic TV. They watch the Craig and Ryland Review Show because of moments like that. Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. yeah. Honestly. <coughs> who, yeah. Needs, who needs yeah. David Penn? Who need David Penn, Paul Longhurst, and and, um, and, you got me and I Wayne say Fox? Yeah. Because you've got Ryland, and, and he I can, can say yeah. And I can say yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to give this ninety percent. I think I'm going to do it. I just need to come up with a way of yeah. doing it. What yeah. are you giving it, Ryland? Yeah. Huh? What are you giving it? Yeah. Give it a mark, Ryland. Yeah, have a mark. Yeah, percent. Come on, no, seriously, give it a mark. Yeah, percent. Right, come on. Mm. <coughs> we'll go seventy-nine. 79%. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, percent. Yeah, percent. 79% from Ryland. He's in a really grumpy mood today. I'm very sorry about this. He's like, he hates everything. He's in a, such a grumpy mood. 79% from Ryland, 90% from me. Let's do one last trick. You saw your favourite trick, trust me. Okay, so last up, we have Crazy Town by David Regal, uh, which is a two-deck routine. You're going to see a performance of me doing this in a minute. It's a, it's a routine with two decks of cards. And uh, the idea is it's basically an impossible, impossible, absolutely, completely and totally impossible uh, kind of prediction. So you have a blue deck which you put to one side. Uh, you can even put a little sticker on that blue deck if you want to, to prove and show that that blue deck has not been tampered with in any way, shape or form. You then take a red deck and four spectators uh, mix up the cards, they shuffle the cards, they mix them up, they shuffle, they mix, they shuffle, they mix some more, they shuffle some more. The cards are really kind of uh, mixed up as much <laughs> as you can possibly imagine. And, yeah. and at some point when they finished, you take the, uh, and, and so you've got four piles, one in front of each spectator. Um, when they finish shuffling, you take the top cards of each pile 
uh, you show that all the other cards are different. You take the top card of each pile, you turn it over, and they've picked four particular cards. And then you take the deck that's been put to one side from the very beginning, and you spread it out. And when you have spread it out, the entire deck is um, fa face down. Well, no, the entire deck is face down, and there's four cards that are face up, and they're the four cards that the spectators have picked. Uh -huh. uh, you then take those four cards out and you show that every other card in the deck is blank. And then when you've shown every other card in the deck is blank, the four cards that they picked all have green backs and it says on them Crazy Town because the whole presentation is, hey, I'm going to take you to Crazy Town. And, uh, and, and that's the finale. And that deck and those cards can be examined. The first deck can't be examined, but the second deck can. Um, let's have a look at a performance of this first of all, so you can see it in action, and then we'll talk about what we think. Uh, I've got two packs of cards. Now, I will tell you right now that the blue deck has a prediction inside it, a prediction of something that's going to happen in the not-too-distant future. Because of that, what I would like you to do is, so you know this is definitely the blue deck, and I haven't switched it or changed it or done anything with it, I also have a red sticker. You can take that red sticker and stick it anywhere on the box that you want to, so that you can confirm later on that that is definitely the blue deck and has not been switched in any way, shape, or form. Can't put it anywhere? No, it's got to go in the box. Okay. Put it right in the circle there. Right in the circle, good choice. Right there. So we know that that deck is definitely your deck, We'll get back to that a little bit later on. It's going to go here. Okay. I also have the red deck. Now, I have to get you to pick a card. And I have to get you to pick a card in a really, really fair way. Because I don't want you saying later on I made you pick one. So if I spread the deck out like this, I might be able to somehow restrict the card that you've taken. If I spread the cards out like this, somehow I might be able to make you take a particular card. Um, even if I, uh, I, 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 I do it face up, I could maybe influence you by... Yeah, somehow. So I need to do it in a very, very way. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and have you pick a card in the fairest possible way. In actual fact, Jack, normally um, there's five people involved in this trick. Five. But there's not five. Uh, sorry, there's four people involved in this trick. Uh, there's not four uh, of you. There's only one of you. Thank so God. we got, yeah, we don't want to have, uh, uh, we don't want to have five of you. So instead, what we'll do is I'm going to take packets of cards I'm going to try and yeah that's fine I'll, we'll, we'll take packets of cards so we're going to take four packets of cards and we're going to do a really random mixing procedure first of all I'm going to take these cards and mix them up face down as much as you want to you can shuffle them you can cut them but make them up as much as you want to so they're in no particular order okay are you done yep that's great and put them back down and then mix those so they're in no particular order Give them a really good mix up. Are you done? Yeah, we'll shove that in the middle of there. Uh, shove it in the middle somewhere. And give them a cut. That's great, put them there. You happy? Yep. Uh, that's great. And do the same with those. Give them a really good mix up. Just really, you know, mix those puppies up as much as you want to. Okay, you're done? Yep. Yeah, that's great. And then finally, take those and do the same thing with those. Mix them face down so you can possibly know the order of any of the cards. Okay. Do you want to do any more mixing of any of the piles? No, I'm good. Are you sure? Yep. So you mixed it so that we had this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here and think about this if you'd have mixed one more card that would have been completely different if you would mixed one more card here that would have been completely different if somehow you'd cut this in a di i don't think you cut that packet but if you had have cut the packet you would have ended up with a completely different card the point is every single one of these cards you could have ended up in a completely different set nobody knows what card that you would have picked but you shuffled and shuffled and shuffled and ended up with these four. Would you agree that that is completely random? Yeah, want to get the aces? Huh? Should we go, well, get no, the no, uh, we'll have a look at what you got. I don't know what you've got. So you've got a queen of hearts. Queen's not bad. You've got the seven of clubs, the nine of diamonds, and the four of spades. Very random. Very random. 
and you could have ended up with anything like i say that that was a completely free choice on your your behalf would you agree yeah but you ended up with these four cards no one could have predicted that you would have ended up with these four cards no one could have known that you would have ended up with these four cards would you agree yeah yeah do you remember that I put this deck here from the very beginning. I know you're not focused hasn't been on this deck, but that's why we put that, that red sticker right there so you know that that's the exact same deck. Here's the thing, I have just taken you to crazy town. Crazy town? I've taken you to crazy town because the way that you picked the cards, the way that you selected the cards was such a haphazard, strange, crazy procedure that we are now officially in crazy town. Me and Warsaw. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I knew we'd go there. Do you know why? This deck has been here from the very, very beginning. And in this deck, I turned four cards over in four different parts of the deck. There's no way. And the four cards I turned over are <gasps> the seven what the of clubs, fuck? the queen of hearts, the four of spades, and the nine what? of diamonds. But I'm telling you, man, I really did know that those were the four cards that you would pick. Which is why... Every other card in the what pack the is blank there, Jack. And when I say I took you to Crazy Town, I mean I really took you to Crazy Town because these four cards say <laughs> Crazy Town, Population, Us. It means that you and I and Michael are now in Crazy Town and you can examine everything. That's insane. Okay, so that is Crazy Town. Now let me talk about uh, some pros and cons. So first of all, um, a big pro is uh, it feels absolutely impossible. Like it really does feel impossible because the spectators are shuffling, the spectators are doing everything. You have nothing to do and yet still this prediction matches. It does feel really impossible. One of the big, not negatives, but one of the big problems with this is, is that you have to think on your feet. It's not, you know, like sometimes you do a trick and it's the same thing. You do this, then you do this, then you do this, you do this, you do the same procedure. And it always is the same procedure every single time. This is a little bit like a mem deck. It's a, there's nothing to memorize or anything, but in terms of, you know, like when you're jazzing with a mem deck and they'll name a card and you have to think, right, how am I going to get to that card? Right, Jack of Hearts, I know that's 20 cards down. Right, cut a small packet of cards and you see that you've got to 15 and you're like, right, okay, what am I going to do from here? It's a little bit like that, but without the memory work in that you've got the spectators shuffling the cards. Depending on the outcome, you have to go in a different direction slightly. The end result is always the same, but the procedure leading up to get end result changes every single performance. And you have to be the sort of performer that can think on their feet and that can um, come up with uh, uh, different approaches that, without giving too much away, different David goes through everything with a fine tooth comb, but you do have to think on your feet. You do have to think on your feet in order to get to that end result, if that kind of makes sense. Um, if you're not the sort of performer that can think on their feet, this might not be for you, but David does explain that exactly what you need to do and the best way to do it. And he goes through different real examples as he's actually demonstrating this. Um, the other thing to consider is that the first deck uh, the red deck that you're using can't be examined at all. Now, that's not too much of an issue because the focus is put on the second deck at the end. The second deck where the cards are blank, that's the deck that people want to examine. And that can be examined, but the first deck can't be examined. Um, the other thing to consider, and I don't know the answer here, this is a little bit like the rubber band trick. In the, We talked about the rubber band trick. Why are you using gimmick bands when you can do linking bands using regular bands what does this add in terms of effect it's the same with this in essence what we have here is we have a revelation of four forced cards um, that's what that's what the whole sequence is it's a revelation of four forced cards and a revelation is a really good one because the cards are forced the method that you're using to force the cards doesn't feel like a force is taking place it does not feel like a force is taking place because they're shuffling, they're mixing, they're doing everything. You wouldn't think for a second, hang on a minute, those cards are forced. You just wouldn't think that. But in essence, they are. So my question is, how much better is this compared to, for example, 
using the riffle force four times or using the classic force four times or using a timing force four times. How much better is this compared to that? Is it much better? It is better. It's arguably better because the procedure is so much fairer. But in order to make that procedure fairer, you've got to have a gimmick deck in play. You've got to have the ability to think on your feet. When in essence, you could just do a riffle force four times and achieve the same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you once again for being really insightful <laughs> and delivering the type of content that people want to hear. Fine. <clears throat> fine. Okay, now we've gone correct. from yeah and fine and you're correct. Um, ultimately, this is a... Ultimately, this is a very good trick. It's a very good trick. If I was entering a magic competition close-up magic competition, and I wanted to do a card trick that had a very good chance of fooling every magician in the room, I would probably do this trick because I think that this is a magician fooler. Uh, and because it's a magician fooler, it will fool absolutely everybody. It's a, it's a great method for having fun. But in essence, what you have here is the red deck will allow you to have four people pick cards and you are, in essence, forcing the cards on those four people, um, but doing it in a very fair way. Uh, you have to consider that you need to take two decks of cards out to do this. So you've got a blue deck and a red deck. I know some people don't like to carry two decks of cards. And uh, you can achieve the same thing with a regular deck, but it's not going to be as clean. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything. It's good. I like it. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I'm going to do it. I just don't. I don't think I'm going to take two decks of cards around to do this trick, especially as you require tables as well. So this is kind of more of a formal close-up show, more of a parlor thing, because you're going to need four people. Um, you're going to need table space for them to put the four packets of cards on. The, there's, there's, it's not the sort of thing you could do walk around. It's not the sort of thing you could do in a banquet situation. It's not the sort of thing that you could do in a lot of situations like that. But if you're doing a formal close-up show and you want to throw something in that, that, that's impossible, this is a great thing to do. My formal close-up show, my parlour show, is already set and, not, and I don't think this would replace anything in there. Which is why I'm giving it 79%. I think it's great and I think if you buy this, you won't be disappointed. But I just don't need it in my act. I, I've got other ways of achieving the same thing. 79% from me. What about you, I Hate Card Tricks? What's your third viewpoint on this? 79%. You're not going to do it? Aren't you going to put this in your stage show? No. Oh, okay. No. Take out Harry Potter and put this in instead. No. Fair enough. 79% uh, from Ryan, 79% from me. Well, let's wrap this up. That's no Visha in the year. That's no Visha in the year. That's no Visha in the year. In the year. Ow. Eh. Yeah. No, it isn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is another review show in the bag. Thank yeah. you once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. Yeah. Don't forget, if you want to follow Ryan and the Kid Magician, it is Ryan and the Kid Magician on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget, if you want to follow us, it's Magic TV. We'll be back again next Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow with something or other. Uh, but thank you for watching. Don't forget, by the way, if you want to join the Netflix, my online streaming platform for magicians, it's www.thenetrix.com. Yeah. Nice. Dot, yeah. Dot, I'll yeah. I'll be back again Stop, soon. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I'm, Stop, yeah. I'm Greg. Stop, yeah. I'm Greg. Yeah. He's Ryland. We'll see you again. Thanks very much. Yeah. Take care. Bye, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah.